Bees, belonging to a monophyletic lineage known as Anthophila within the superfamily Apoidea, are winged insects closely associated with wasps and ants, renowned for their crucial roles in pollination and honey production, especially the widely recognized western honeybee. Bees encompass over 20,000 species across seven distinct biological families, while some species like honeybees, bumblebees, and stingless bees exhibit social behavior in colonies. The majority of bees, more than 90%, such as mason bees, carpenter bees, leafcutter bees, and sweat bees, live solitary lives. Found on every continent except Antarctica, bees thrive in diverse habitats housing insect-pollinated flowering plants. In the northern hemisphere, the diminutive halitidae, known as sweat bees, dominate but are frequently mistaken for wasps or flies. Bee sizes range widely, from minuscule stingless varieties with workers under 2 mm long to the largest leafcutter bee species, Megachili Pluto, whose females can reach 39 mm in length, feeding on nectar for energy and pollen as a primary source of protein and nutrients. Bees predominantly use pollen as food for their larvae. Various predators threaten bees, including vertebrates like primates and bee-eating birds, as well as insect predators like bee wolves and dragonflies. The significance of bee pollination holds ecological and commercial importance. The decline in wild bee populations has elevated the value of pollination by commercially managed honey beehives. A study analyzing 353 wild bee and hoverfly species in Britain from 1980 to 2013 revealed a concerning trend. A quarter of the habitats they occupied in 1980 had seen a loss of these insects. Humans have practiced beekeeping or apiculture. Meliponoculture for stingless bees, for millennia, dating back to ancient Egypt and Greece. Bees have been deeply embedded in mythology, folklore, and various artistic expressions across history, predominantly in regions where beekeeping is more prevalent. Notably, the Mayans in Mesoamerica have engaged in large scale intensive meliponoculture since pre Columbian times. Evolution Bees trace their ancestry back to stinging wasps within the family Crabronidae, which were primarily insect predators. The shift from preying on insects to collecting pollen might have occurred when these wasps consumed flower visiting insects covered in pollen while feeding them to their larvae. A similar evolutionary transition is speculated to have happened among Vespoid wasps, where pollen wasps emerged from predatory predecessors. Phylogenetic studies suggest that bees originated during the early Cretaceous, around 124 million years ago, on the supercontinent of West Gondwana just before its fragmentation into South America and Africa. This ancient supercontinent was likely a predominantly dry environment. Interestingly, Present-day hotspots of bee diversity also exist in dry and seasonal temperate environments, indicating a strong conservation of habitats among bees since their inception. Genomic analyses reveal that despite their relatively late appearance in the fossil record, all modern bee families had diverged from each other by the end of the Cretaceous period. The Melitidae, Apidae, and Megachilidae had already evolved on West Gondwana before its breakup. Subsequent divergence was influenced by the separation of Africa and South America, leading to significant splits within the Apidae and Megachilidae. The isolation of the Melitidae in Africa, and the emergence of the Caledidae, Andrinidae, and Halitidae in South America, the rapid diversification of South American bee families likely followed the simultaneous radiation of flowering plants in that region. During the later Cretaceous period, around 80 million years ago, colleted bees migrated from South America to Australia, resulting in the Stenotrididae, and South American bees also colonized North America by the end of the Cretaceous. Fossils like Cretotrigona found in North America suggest that numerous bee lineages went extinct during the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. After surviving this extinction event, bee lineages continued spreading into the Northern Hemisphere. They colonized Europe from Africa during the Paleocene and gradually expanded eastward into Asia, benefiting from a warming climate that allowed them to inhabit higher latitudes alongside the spread of tropical and subtropical habitats. 
By the Eocene, around 45 million years ago, there was notable diversity among eusocial bee lineages. Another extinction event among bees occurred around the Eocene-Oligocene boundary due to rapid climatic cooling. This led to the extinction of certain bee lineages, such as the tribe Melicertini. Throughout the Paleogene and Neogene periods, different bee lineages continued dispersing globally, leading to the isolation and evolution of numerous new bee tribes facilitated by shifting habitats and the connectivity of continents. Fossils The oldest non-compression bee fossil, Cretatrigona prisca, dates back to the late Cretaceous, approximately 70 million years ago, and was discovered in New Jersey amber. Melitosphex bermensis, initially considered an extinct lineage of pollen-collecting apoidea, from the early Cretaceous, approximately 100 million years ago, was later disputed and is no longer regarded as a bee or a member of the apoidea superfamily, but rather classified as inserti sedes within the aculeata. Different bee families appear in the fossil record at various points in time. Allodopini, within the Apidae, around 53 million years ago. Coletidae from the late Oligocene to early Miocene, approximately 25 million years ago. Melitidae in the early Eocene with Paleomacropus eocenicus. Megachilidae with characteristic leaf-cutting trace fossils from the Middle Eocene. Andrinidae at the Eocene-Oligocene boundary around 34 million years ago. And Halitidae first appearing in the early Eocene with some species preserved in amber. Stenotrididae are known from fossilized brood cells dating back to the Pleistocene age. Coevolution The earliest flowers that relied on animal pollination had shallow, cup-shaped structures, attracting insects like beetles. This pollination syndrome was already established before the appearance of bees. However, bees introduced a specialized approach to pollination, distinguished by behavioral and physical adaptations that significantly enhanced the efficiency of this process, making them the most effective pollinators among insects. In a co-evolutionary process, flowers evolved specific rewards like nectar and longer tubes, while bees developed longer tongues to access this nectar. Moreover, bees evolved specialized structures such as scopal hairs and pollen baskets to gather and transport pollen. These structures varied across bee groups, with scopal hairs predominantly located on their hind legs or the underside of their abdomens. In most species, while some in the Apidae family possess pollen baskets on their hind legs, while a few collect pollen in their crops, the emergence of these specialized structures drove the adaptive radiation of flowering plants, and, in turn, influenced the evolution and diversification of bees. Bees not only co-evolved with flowers but also established relationships with mites. Some bee species provide tufts of hairs called a carinaria that serve as accommodations for mites. In return, it's believed that these mites consume fungi that attack pollen, establishing a potentially mutualistic relationship in this context. Phylogeny, the phylogenetic tree based on Debevic et al. 2012, indicates that bees, Anthophila, originated from within the Crabronidae family, rendering it paraphyletic. However, the placement of the Heterogynidae family remains uncertain. Characteristics Bees possess unique characteristics that distinguish them from closely related groups like wasps. These traits include branched or plume like Satie hairs, combs on forelimbs for antennae cleaning, slight anatomical differences in limb structure, and specific venation in hind wings. Female bees exhibit a seventh dorsal abdominal plate divided into two half plates. Bees display the following attributes. Large compound eyes covering a significant portion of the head, along with three small simple eyes, a chelly, that gauge light intensity. Antennae with numerous segments housing various sensory organs capable of detecting touch, smell, and taste. They also detect air movement, functioning somewhat like hearing organs. Mouthparts adapted for both chewing and sucking, featuring mandibles and elongated proboscis for nectar consumption. A thorax comprising three segments with robust legs and membranous wings.
The hind legs may possess pollen baskets for collecting pollen, while front legs may have combs for antennae cleaning. An abdomen consisting of nine segments, with the last three segments modified into a sting. Sociality. Bees exhibit a diverse range of social structures, varying from solitary to communal and eusocial types. The evolution of eusociality in bees appears to have occurred independently in multiple lineages. Eusociality is more readily accomplished in haplodiploid species like bees due to their unusual relatedness structure. In such species, females develop from fertilized eggs and males from unfertilized eggs. This mechanism leads to females sharing more genetic material with their sisters than with their own offspring, fostering cooperative behaviors within colonies. However, haplodiploidy isn't a strict requirement for eusociality, as some eusocial species aren't haplodiploid, and not all haplodiploid species are eusocial. Yet, it's suggested that haplodiploidy might have contributed to the evolution of eusociality in bees. Eusociality manifests differently across various bee species, ranging from highly eusocial colonies seen in honeybees to more primitive eusocial arrangements in species like sweatbees. Halididae family, are those that exhibit a mix of eusocial and solitary behaviors within populations. Honeybees, stingless bees, bumblebees, and certain halitid bees exhibit varying degrees of eusociality, forming colonies with distinct castes and division of labor among reproductive and non-reproductive members. Solitary and communal bees present intriguing social dynamics that vary significantly from highly organized, eusocial bees. Unlike eusocial bees, which include honeybees and certain bumblebees, most other bees, such as carpenter bees, leafcutter bees, and mason bees, adopt a solitary lifestyle. In these solitary species, every female bee is fertile and constructs her own nest, lacking any division of labor, queens, or worker bees. Solitary bees typically don't produce honey or beeswax, unlike their eusocial counterparts. Solitary bees gather pollen to provision their nests as food for their brood. This pollen is often mixed with nectar, forming a paste-like substance. While solitary bees play a crucial role in pollination, some wasp species and a few bee species scavenge from carcasses to feed their offspring. The nesting behaviors of solitary bees are diverse. Most solitary bees are fossorial, creating nests in various soil textures or conditions, while others utilize hollow reeds, twigs, or holes in wood for nesting. Each female typically crafts a compartment, cell, with an egg and provisions for the developing larva before sealing it off. A nest might consist of multiple cells. In wooden nests, the eggs closest to the entrance usually develop into males. After laying eggs, the adult does not provide care for the brood and often dies after completing one or more nests. Solitary bees rarely sting, doing so only in self-defense, and some species, especially within the Andrinidae family, are stingless. While solitary, some species, like the European mason bee, Hoplitis anthocopoides, and the Dawson's burrowing bee, Amagilla dawsoni, display gregarious behavior by constructing nests near others of the same species. Large groups of solitary bee nests are referred to as aggregations, distinct from colonies. In certain species, multiple females might share a common nest entrance, termed communal, aiding in defense against predators and parasites. Biology Life cycle The life cycle of a bee, whether solitary or social, involves the laying of an egg, followed by larval development through various molts, a pupation stage, and finally, the emergence of a winged adult. The number of eggs laid by a female bee can vary significantly across species. In temperate climates, most solitary bees and bumblebees overwinter as adults or pupae and emerge in spring when flowering plants bloom. Tropical bees may have multiple generations annually without a diapause stage. The egg, generally oblong and slightly curved, is laid by solitary bees in individual cells alongside a supply of mixed pollen and nectar, known as mass provisioning.
Larvae of most species are whitish grubs with segments, spiracles in each segment for breathing, and no legs but with side tubercles to facilitate movement. Larvae undergo metamorphosis into winged adults within a cocoon, emerging from the cell as adults. Flight Bee flight, often misunderstood as violating aerodynamic theory, utilizes mechanics similar to helicopters rather than fixed wing flight. Vortices created by the wings contribute to lift, and high-speed cinematography has shown that bees generate lift through rapid wing strokes, wing rotation, and a significantly fast wing beat frequency, navigation, communication, and foraging. Honey bees communicate through the waggle dance, indicating the location of food sources to other hive members. Their navigation involves recognizing compass directions through the sun, polarization pattern of the sky, and Earth's magnetic field. Bees use spatial memory for navigation, possessing a rich, map-like organizational system. Digestion Bee guts are relatively simple, but their gut microbiota employs multiple metabolic strategies. Pollinating bees consume nectar and pollen, which require different digestion strategies involving specialized bacteria. Nectar, being mostly monosaccharide sugars, is easily absorbed, while pollen contains complex polysaccharides. Specific bacterial clades play distinct roles in the digestion of simple sugars and complex polysaccharides. While most bee species are nectarivorous and palinivorous, some, like vulture bees in the Trigona genus, consume carrion and wasp brood, converting meat into a honey-like substance. The ecological relationships and behaviors of bees are fascinating and diverse, encompassing various aspects of pollination, mimicry, parasitism, and interactions with predators, pathogens, and parasites. Floral relationships Asterisk, bees exhibit varied pollen collection behaviors. Most bees are polylectic, generalist, collecting pollen from a wide range of flowering plants, while others are oligologists, specialists, gathering pollen from specific plant species or genera. Additionally, some bee genera specialize in collecting plant oils alongside or instead of nectar for larval food. Certain male orchid bees gather aromatic compounds from orchids, presenting a rare instance where male bees act as effective pollinators. Bees can detect desirable flowers through ultraviolet patterning, floral odors, and even electromagnetic fields, and use cues like nectar quality and pollen taste to determine their visitation preferences. Some plant species may rely on a single bee species for effective pollination, and the endangerment of certain plants can be partially attributed to the threatened status of their specific pollinators. Yet, there's a trend where oligolectic bees are associated with common, widespread plants visited by multiple pollinator species. Mimicry Asterisk bees, with their aposmatic, warning, coloration, serve as models for Batesian mimicry by non-stinging insects like beeflies, robberflies, and hoverflies. They also exhibit malarian mimicry, imitating other aposmatic insects sharing similar color schemes, including wasps, beetles, butterflies, and moths. Intriguingly, certain plants like the bee orchid mimic both the appearance and scent of female bees to attract males for pollination, pseudocopulation, brood parasitism, asterisk, brood parasites occur in various bee families, including certain nomadinae subfamily species that lack pollen-collecting structures and infiltrate the nests of pollen-collecting bees to lay their eggs in host cells. Upon hatching, the parasitic bee larva consumes the host larva's pollen ball, often along with the host egg. In some cases, like the Cape honeybee, A.M. Capensis, in southern Africa, Parasitic workers lay diploid eggs, thelotoki, in hives of African honeybees, escaping the typical policing mechanism of worker bees and causing destruction to the colony. Nocturnal bees. Asterisk. Several bee species from different families, including Andrinidae, Coletidae, Halitidae, and Apidae, exhibit crepuscular behavior. These bees, often in tropical or arid regions, possess enlarged achelae capable of sensing light and dark changes but unable to form images. 
Some have refracting superposition compound eyes, allowing them to fly by night, avoid predators, and exploit nocturnal nectar-producing flowers. Predators, parasites, and pathogens. Asterisk. Bees face a range of predators, including vertebrates like bee-eaters, shrikes, swifts, and swallows. Certain birds like the greater honeyguide interact with humans by guiding them to wild bee nests for honey collection, benefiting from the larvae and wax. Predatory insects like crab spiders, predatory bugs, praying mantises, and bee wolves target bees, while certain mites such as tracheal and varroa mites affect honey bees as parasites. However, some bees have a presumed mutualistic relationship with certain mite species, where the mites consume fungi attacking pollen. Bees exhibit a complex set of relationships with flora, predators, and other species, showcasing their ecological importance and intricate behavioral adaptations. The symbiotic relationship between mycelium and bees, particularly honeybees and stingless bees, is emerging as a critical factor in maintaining bee health and immunity against various threats they face. Here's a detailed breakdown of how mycelium benefits bees and the impact of this relationship. Fungus properties. Recent studies have highlighted that specific fungi like Zygosaccharomyces, sp. Candida sp. and Monascus ruber produce chemicals that fight bacteria, fungal infections, and viruses. Bees have been observed foraging mycelium, suggesting that it provides essential nutrients that bolster their collective immunity. Mycelium ingestion has shown to lower honeybee morbidity rates by preventing fungal infections that could lead to colony collapse disorder, CCD. Moreover, mycelium germinating inside varroa mites and killing them offers a natural solution against these bee infiltrating pests without resorting to harmful pesticides. Bee broods and gut microbiota. Bee larvae, initially incapable of producing vital steroids, rely on ingesting mycelium for nutrients like EC desteroids and Zygosaccharomyces sp. to support their development. The gut microbiota plays a crucial role in bee colony health, as studies have shown that introducing certain organisms disturbs the microbiota, impacting bee survivability. In contrast, introducing beneficial mycelium to the bee gut microbiota has shown positive effects on survivability during both development and adulthood. Bee fungus symbiosis. Honeybees rely on mycelium for essential steroids during early development, aiding their performance, reproduction, honey production, and overall hive stability. The ingestion of EC desteroids and Zygosaccharomyces sp. from mycelium significantly impacts the bee's ability to combat infections and maintain strength for pollination. Impact of pesticides. Pesticides pose a significant threat to bee populations by affecting their sensitive gut microbiome, causing a higher morbidity rate among bees. Harmful chemicals in pesticides have been shown to disrupt colony fitness and overall bee health, environmental impact and policy implications. Understanding how mycelium enhances bee immunity is pivotal in potentially increasing bee lifespan and reproduction rates. This knowledge could drive policies to reduce harmful pesticide usage, allowing bees and mycelium to perform their vital environmental roles without interruption. The symbiotic relationship between bees and mycelium promotes not only bee survivability but also the growth of fungi through enhanced pollination, which, in turn, supports improved air and soil quality and boosts plant life. The recent studies on the symbiotic relationship between mycelium and bees underline the necessity of re-evaluating the use of harmful pesticides. By reducing the application of these chemicals, bees and mycelium can perform their ecological functions more effectively, contributing to the overall health of ecosystems. The relationship between bees and humans spans various domains, from mythology and folklore to agriculture and dietary practices. In mythology and folklore, bees have held symbolic and mystical significance in various mythologies and cultures. Greek mythology associated bees with divination, truth-speaking, Apollo, and the Delphic Oracle. 
The discovery of honey was attributed to a nymph named Melissa, v. Bees were used as symbols in ancient writings, political theories, and English folklore, telling the bees, representing human societies and serving as omens in households. In art and literature, bees have been subjects in various forms of art, from ancient rock paintings to modern literature and films. Works by authors like W.B. Yeats, Beatrix Potter, and Sue Monk Kidd have incorporated bees into their stories. The animated comedy film, Bee Movie, created by Jerry Seinfeld, explored a fictional world of bees and their interactions with humans. Beekeeping Humans have kept honeybee colonies for millennia, dating back to ancient times in Egypt. The practice involves collecting honey, beeswax, propolis, pollen, and royal jelly. Bees are also utilized for pollination and commercial sale to other beekeepers. Historical records from authors like Aristotle, Virgil, and Pliny describe beekeeping practices, hive construction, and bee biology. Innovations in hive design, like the movable comb hive, allowed for honey harvesting without harming the colony. As commercial pollinators, bees play a crucial role in pollinating flowering plants, contributing to one-third of the human food supply. However, over recent decades, there has been a decline in bee species richness and population, due to increased stress from parasites, diseases, pesticide use, and reduced wildflowers, possibly exacerbated by climate change. Colony Collapse Disorder, CCD, significantly affected honeybee populations, particularly in the United States, where factors like varroa mites, viruses, and invertebrate iridescent virus contributed to massive losses. Impact of pesticides Pesticides, particularly neonicotinoids like clothianidin and imidacloprid, have been implicated in bee population decline. Efforts, including restrictions on certain pesticides by the European Union, have been made to prevent further bee population decrease due to pesticide toxicity. Raising native plants Some farmers have turned to raising native plants to support native bee species, lessening the dependence on honeybee populations for pollination. As food producers, honey is a natural product produced by bees and has been harvested by humans since ancient times. Humans use honey commercially, along with substances like pollen, propolis, and royal jelly, which are sometimes used as dietary supplements. In some countries, bees, including their larvae, pupae, and bee brood, are consumed as part of the diet due to their high protein content and nutrient value. The relationship between bees and humans is intricate, encompassing cultural, agricultural, and dietary aspects, and it continues to evolve as understanding of their importance and interaction deepens.